This isn't even their final form. And we won't see that probably ever again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's awesome to see. Huh? No matter what, we're gonna be there. Uh yeah, okay. I see that. That's certainly interesting. Wait, what now? Oh, oh evil! God. Well then. Oh my god. They came in the right order too! Good. 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 Oh yeah. Wait, what now? Oh, yeah. What is up, THL? Welcome to High Quality Production Value, uh, where uh, Skype is down because, you know, Florida. Um, I don't know if that's true, but Skype is currently down. So you will get to stare at my beautiful mug all night. Hopefully, uh, Nade will get our sister stream going for us so you guys can have that beautiful sight to look at. Uh, on tap tonight, our, our back burner semi-permanent host, the Anarchist, will be rolling with us tonight filling in for the guest that i failed to get for us this week our house rules for the evening as always feels anything man uh during the power rankings every minute you take a drink anytime we talk about avatar because it's just fucking hilarious at this point and uh hurricane i'm actually not sure that there is there two fucking r's in hurricane or am i an idiot oh uh, there's two r's go me um Holding down my left, your right, it's not the bearded beauty. It's this gorgeous gentleman smoking a pipe, the anarchist. How you doing tonight, man? Doing pretty good. I didn't know what picture you got. That's a picture, but I like it. <laughs> I, I Listen, it, when there's no webcam, I go with the memeiest shit I can find. Um, that is a picture from like seven years ago. <laughs> guys, 17-year-old anarchist smoking a pipe. It's pretty good. I have to go see this. I haven't. I can't see it from here. Uh, uh, in the in the bottom left, anchoring his usual spot is uh, Mage himself, the professional potato farmer, aka the bringer of death, as you can see in his image for this evening. How are you, Mage? Nah, it feels windy, man. <laughs> pretty good though. How are you guys? Oh, uh, fantastic, man. Um, so listen, folks, we're gonna try to keep this one brief, uh, because it's it's. Start pool now. We're going to see how long it takes for Mange's power to get cut off and for us to lose them this evening. So uh, we're going to try to get this in so that we can have Mange for the whole time because Lord knows you don't want to sit here and listen to Anarchist and myself. Um, maybe him. Definitely not me. So let's get right into the week that was, week three recap. Um, things not really looking exactly how I expected them to look. So let's talk about the upset of the week. Mange, feels entropy, man. Tell me about it. Yeah, my upset of the week is uh, Team Golden List over Entropy. Uh, we know about the hype coming in for Entropy, and we know that the Golden List has historically struggled since they, they've been in the league. Um, but the Golden List pulled it out. And I don't know. How, how are things going over in Entropy Land? How are you guys feeling about things? Yeah, uh, it was – Dean Lonman was last uh, last play, and I think uh, I think if he won 3-1, we, we could have tied or something like that. I don't know. Um, and Bulk had his uh, first loss. I think Smoke Salmon, I think that was his first loss as well. Uh, I bounced back, so that was good. But, uh, yeah, um, Arcane's working two jobs right now, so – Hearthstone's He's got a lot of, on his plate. Yeah, yeah. Hearthstone's kind of back burner for, uh, for yeah. real life issues, which we can respect. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Man, uh, I think uh, I think that's changing soon, so I think he's looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah it's one of those things, it's like, I need two jobs, I need two jobs, I need two jobs. You're happy because you got the money, but it's like, fuck, I have no life. Um, so hopefully we'll see a, a increase in arcane's play as i do believe over the past two weeks that does make him zero and six um, he has been swept uh, the past two weeks feels bad feels, man feels bad yep. man but arcane's a decent dude uh as long as you don't ask kzc um i'm sure most would agree that arcane's a decent dude um <laughs> so hopefully he can get a point or two next week and, and break this slump he is on um yeah dude golden wisp good stuff my upset of the week, 
I this is another one that's not so much as upset, and I could have done this as a shocker. Um, is Netherstorm over the Yog Champs? Uh, I think that Netherstorm was in a really low place. Um, and they needed a good week this week to kind of boost morale. And Yog Champs is a team that has been kind of, uh, they, they've earned some respect this season. Um, and they've last season, they, I was on their bandwagon last season. So yes, there is a DQ victory. And as we all know, you can't really judge a whole lot from a DQ, but I don't think many of us saw this outcome coming this week. Except for Cheesy10, who picked it on our pick em last week. Um, but that would be my... I don't want to call it upset so much as I didn't see it coming. Yeah, that's the that's what I picked as well this week um, for the for the upset. It's not even so much like that. It, like you said, it was just... They won pretty handily. I mean, they got... They had a... Uh, Jim and I bounced back with a 3-0 sweep. And then... Um, Swinky Tiger and Crovan both um, with three one victory. So um, uh, that was a pretty good victory. Uh, Cheesy Ten got the DQ against Real Doctor Who, so that was pretty good for him. And Aroy, the reason that you don't know the answer to that question is you're fucking late to the show. So fuck you, Anarchist. Uh, I know I completely stole your oh. your topic. Is there anything I didn't say that, in addition to you? <laughs> um, what you just said here that you want to add to your pick? Uh, not really. I mean, I thought, uh, I was, I mean, Crovan had a really big PR deficit. I know Dunham to bring decks as they're called, but, uh, Crovan beating Dunham is three, one. I think that definitely clinched it for him. That was a, that was a big win. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So, as we move on to the Shockers of the Week, I just got to say, I love what we all did here with this. Um, a little different look at our Shockers of the Week, guys, because this is the category that could go to a team or player, or Anarchist is even inventing a new meta. We'll get to that in a minute. Mage, can you tell us about your Shocker of the Week? Yeah. So, my Shocker of the Week, uh, and we touched on it a little bit just a minute ago, is Drubik's Cube 3-0 over Anarch, or I'm sorry, over Arcane Poop. Uh, Drubix Cube has has struggled a little bit since mm. entering the league. You know, his PR has fallen a little bit. And Arcane is thought to be one of the better four seeds. Um, obviously, you know, he's got some stuff going on. But, uh, but uh, even still, like, the 3-0 him, it, it totally surprised me when I saw it in the uh, the result column. I was like, whoa. I was, like, making sure that wasn't, a, like, a, a an SHL result that slips in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, was that was big and it honestly is like one of the key reasons that golden was upset entropy so yeah as uh anarchist alluded to a moment ago d lyman had an opportunity in the final matchup with a point or two more to uh, bring it to a tie so it was super close so anything arcane could have added to the total there would have been huge yeah um and hopefully that'll be a, a I don't know if Drubix Cube has lost any confidence, but as you said, he's kind of struggled since entering the league. PR drop, and hopefully that'll be a good boost for him uh, moving forward in the season. Um, so, heading on to my shocker of the week, different kind of take on it. Mine actually goes to Aeon and NWA tying. Um, no disrespect to NWA, but when I looked at this matchup, I liked it very much so for Aeon. Uh, I thought when you looked at the way they matched up seed by seed, I was expecting at least a five point um, vic uh, yeah, five point victory in favor of Aeon. And I was very impressed by Pink Samus and Dreaded coming through in the four and five seed to help their team uh, keep even in the, the points total. So even though they lost three matches to two, um, the way that Drudda came through with the 3-0 win over Missing Shoelaces, Pink Sam getting the 3-1 over Raging Rhino. Um, huge, huge pickups on the NWA side in their 4-5 or five seed and definitely caught me off guard. So good work down there in NWA. Keep it up. Um, you know, you got to keep fueling yourselves there. Don't reach one too early, though, because then you'll have nothing to play for. Um... 
Anarchist, I really like what you did with your shocker. Can you tell us a bit about it? So my shocker of the week this week isn't any particular player or team match. It's blue over red this week. Uh, blue division won three matches this week and tied talking about the Aeon NWA match. But Netherstorm beat Yogchamp 17 to, what is it, uh, 17 to 6. Mm. Harry Generals beat Temporal Legends 20 to 2 in a, just a shellacking of them. Record. <laughs> a new record. And then, t- like uh, we talked about before, Golden Whist beat Entropy uh, 15 to uh, 11. And I know coming into this season, a lot of people thought blue was, you know, blue and orange were the two uh, powerhouse divisions for this season. And so far, blue and red had been fairly, fairly even, I would say, up to this week. You know, Netherstorm been struggling. Aeon had a, I think the, I think, did we beat him? I can't remember. But um, Harry Generals had a slow start, and now blue is just rolling right now and it'll be interesting to see the last week of uh blue versus red matchups uh this week yeah i really like the the concept of looking at you know uh i'll I'll be straightforward people in discord have kind of bitched about division balancing in in thl um not realizing that it was initially done randomly you know we didn't have we have had a lot of new teams as well since the divisions have been designed and you do the best you can with assigning uh, new teams to divisions where you think they'll fit. Um, and the way that the blue red uh, matchup is playing out is it's making for a very interesting conference. I, I really liked that, that take on your shocker of the week. Um, key win of the week. This could be either a player or a team. Mange, we talked, or I touched on this a second ago, but tell us a little bit more about your key win of the week and why you thought it was so important. Yeah. Uh, I have Pink Samus over Raging Rhino. Um, I know that Pink Samus had been struggling a little bit for NWA. I don't think that he won a match. Or if he did, he only won one. And Raging Rhino was previously undefeated. Uh, but Samus got, I think, a 3-1 um, over, over Raging Rhino, and it ended up being uh, one of the biggest reasons that the NWA was able to tie. Um, if he didn't win, and went so decisively, uh, NWA would have lost this week, and you know, you're losing out on that tie point, which can be a big deal when you're fighting for seeding. So, mm. you know, to step up after struggling a little bit to start the season, uh, that was a pretty huge win. Yeah, it, it having a uh, top heavy team or a mid heavy team, and then having your bomb dudes in the four and five seed come through is is absolutely huge and a confidence booster for any team. Um, speaking of four seeds and, and being confidence boosters, my key win does not uh, for this week is not so much the importance that the win had for the team as the win had for the player because I spoke to the player shortly after this match was finished. Uh, my key win is going to go to Aroy over Jing Buddha. Um, I know that there's a lot of hype around the matchup. Uh, Jing is an old vet with a lot of respect in this league. Aroy has had some struggles at one point. Uh, he was over 400 at one point, was he not? Um, I don't think so. Uh, he was at least close to, it. close to it. Yeah, he was like 370, I think, when he came in. And, and I know that this was a big win in his eyes. I think it was a big win in a lot of the eyes of people who have seen A-Roy now for two seasons, uh, finding a home this season on the Defias Brotherhood. Um, going up against a very well-respected vet like Jing and coming out with a win, I think that's going to be a great confidence booster for him moving forward and also for his reputation throughout the league, uh, yeah. especially with those who have been around a while. Yeah, I agree. Like Being good is a big deal. Like, Jing Buddha has had success in the one and two seasons this league. Right, And right. Uh, with that win, like, Aroy, I believe, moved to 4-0 on the season. So to be 4-0 with a win like that under your belt, like, like now now you're, you're putting together a really good season. Maybe whispers of an MVP type season, yeah. Uh, maybe we just jinxed him because he thinks this show controls his fate. Well, you know, sack up, Aroy. Ah, boy. Ericus, what do you have as your key win of the week? Uh, this week, uh, my key win of the week is uh, 1600 Dust over um, the damage ones this week. 
Um, I thought it was really important for them to follow up their uh, their win last week over um, Noob Central. Last week they beat Noob Central, and Noob Central's really sh- this season. Even though they won this week, it was by um, they had two DQs and in their favor. So I mean, their the matches that they played, they were one and t- or uh, yeah, one and two. So I thought th- this was going to be a good test for sixteen hundred dust after a disappointing start, but going up against Team Rank Five. Uh, it's kind of expected at this point, but um, yeah, them winning over the damaged ones, they're going to have a good test next uh, this week as well. They're playing um, playing Defy's Brotherhood, mm. so but I think that really gave them after winning last week. That really gave them some confidence. I would assume that they can hang in this league after being, you know, they embraced the twelve hundred PR meme, and now they're they're like, let's uh let's show them what, what yep. we got. Yep. <laughs> And I, I love rooting for them. Like, the, the way they embrace the meme and we're like, yeah, and, like, having fun with them. And now they're just going out and kicking ass. Like, God, they're, like, my favorite team. That's not us. I'm rooting <laughs> for them every week. You know, there's a lot of people that like to get butt hurt over playful comments. And, uh, you know, we we said quite a few times on here, and as you just said, the way they fucking embrace the meme. And then since that have, you know, talk all the shit you want about us, we're going to fucking win. Um it's awesome. I, I'm I'm glad to see them having success. I hope they're having fun in the league. Um, and, and it feels good, man. It feels good to see 1600 putting in that work. So, what did we learn? What did we learn from week three? What did we learn from the maxed point win from Team Rank 5 over Avatar? Team Rank 5 throwing down the 20 to fucking, I think it was like 7 shellacking over Avatar. Team Rank 5, um, by the way, hold up. One more sec- One more sec- fact yeah. I want to throw in here. One more fact I just remembered. Team Rank 5 <laughs> is also 14 points ahead of the second place team in the entire league. Uh, and 20 points ahead of the third place team. And the third place team has points for this week already. So, what have we learned? <laughs> uh, that avatar is imploding. You know, we, we predicted it last week on in the Power Rankings and then talked about it on Tavern Talk. And uh, it's it's coming. And I don't you know if you guys were just in Discord, you heard G Nets tilting and literally, literally uninstalling Hearthstone and leaving uh, Avatar chat. I mean, it, you know, Avatar's looking for a one seed, guys. It's all over for them. He's uh, He's in chat right now, too. He's tilted. Tilted, per, not tilted, perma tilted. Perma tilted, um, I forgot that. <laughs> tilted F. Um, yeah, then guys, that was like two minutes before we came on the show. Now, for those of you who just look at where your team is in the power rankings, I know we're going to get to the power rankings in a minute. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, Team Rank 5 is 13 and 2 in uh, their, their matches for the season. So I have 15 possible matches played. They've only dropped two of those 15 matches. That's kind of scary. So I don't know if it mattered who was in front of them this week. I think that we're learning that uh, Team Rank 5 knows how, how flags are treated and how long they fly. Um, I think they want theirs they to, fly want to fly forever. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. Don't you dare. The jinx is on. Nope. The jinx is on. <laughs> we're just week by week. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sure it is. Sure it is. So, what did we learn from Team Golden Wisp over Entropy, fifteen to eleven? Uh, Double O's is the real deal. Like, if there is any doubt, like the way he was able, like I think his his three opponents have been, uh, Imbol, uh, Hector How, and I don't remember the other one. He he fought. Oh, Donimus, who are all have had. Pretty good success in this league, and he's just kicked everyone's ass. So he's pretty good. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the rest of those guys are pretty good too, and they pulled out a nice win. So I've had to start to wonder, um, as I'm watching this, if this is a case of entropy not as good as we thought, slash um, Team Golden was better than we thought, and if you look at the overall standings in where teams are in points, 
Uh, I think if you if you look at the general field, we're seeing a trend here that we've seen before. Green, fairly even in the one through three. Red, per the fucking usual, uh, truly separated by one week of matchups uh, from one to four. Blue has two teams sitting stupidly high on top and two teams just hoping they can sneak into uh, second place late in the season. And orange, there's no question about it. Defias and Team Rank 5 are running away with it over there. So, you know, the question is nagging at me of, is this a case of the league evening out? Or is this a case of entropy wasn't as good as we thought? I don't know, man. Anarchist, what do you think? You're in that camp, man. I don't know those guys. Uh, I don't know. It's, um... It's tough. I mean, I don't know if it's it's uh, if it's. I mean, we had a lot of hype. I mean, we had a team that was not expected, and I think that gave us a lot of hype coming in. Is smoke smoke salmon put together a team that no one was expecting to get put together, and so I think that definitely did have some hype onto it. But I think at the same time, it's um, I think it's Golden Wisp getting there. I think Golden Wisp is better than we thought. Mm. Um, but I do think we have had a lot of hype. So we, if we're going off of what we were expecting, we're definitely underperforming right now, but I don't necessarily think that that's going to stay the same. Like, I think we will, um, will perform like we, like we were expected to. I also would like to point out one more correlation and and Mange could back me up on this. this. There's been a direct correlation between, the amount of time Entropy has spent in the Discord since the season started and the steady decline of how shitty they're becoming. Um, Mage, how many how many Entropy folks have you seen in Discord lately? Uh, not many, to be honest. Uh, just just uh, just one, C. Parker, and yourself, if he's not a player. Yes. But the rest yeah. of the guys don't come in no more, you know? So Team Discord, <laughs> Team Discord's not Team Discord anymore. What the fuck, yeah. guys? I hear I hear rumbles of maybe players not playing as much Hearthstone as they should be, not doing as as much prep work with some of their higher seeds as they could be. I don't know. Just rumbles I hear. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, man. Hot's prep is uh, Hearthstone prep. <laughs> uh, hot That's right. sick. I know I Inbox like... been playing a lot this week, and then. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, M Bulk's been playing a lot. I'm trying to get back in there. D Lyman's busy as can be, but he's still he yeah. he knows his stuff. Yeah. So. so we talked about this one a little bit already. Um, I don't know if we need to beat a dead horse, but just to give another uh, opportunity in case we missed anything, um, Defias Brotherhood with a a statement win over the Green Division leader, which I don't know how much weight that has of Danger Zone. Um, what did we learn here? Is it that green sucks, or is it that Defias is as good as I knew they would be? Well, green definitely sucks. <laughs> but I also think Defias is pretty good, too. I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting lost by Smoke Sam and talking shit in chat. Um, Same. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh, if anybody's yeah, watching uh, this on the vods, you, you might have to go into the uh, the the Twitch and watch rechat, um, so you know what the fuck we're all distracted with over here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like Aeroy beat Bing Buddha. Like we, I mean, we talked about like that's, you know, maybe not now. Like maybe we should start valuing Aeroy, but like that's a pretty big upset, and the rest of them just just whooped on him. And then, like, I think Hambone is the only one for um, Defias Brotherhood to lose. And he lost in five. So, like, it, it was really close to just sweeping out the green leaders. The green division leaders. Like, incredibly close. Uh, there is a DQ there. Yeah. Which I don't, yeah. Know, I don't know much about, to be honest. But those guys are good. Uh, we're, we're watching them. We're excited to play them next week. That's going to be a fucking marquee matchup, Mike. and we'll get into that when we get to week four. So let's talk about, guys, the uh, the lovely power rankings that uh, I would say Mange and the boys over at Team Rank 5, but let's face it, it's mostly Mange uh, carrying the, the load of here. Of the, I, do, I do the writing. 
Um, uh, him and Parker do sit there and bitch about it in Discord about uh, yeah. where things should go. But it, it Mange puts. So if you guys want to know who put the awesome uh, Avatar right up into the power rankings this week, um, that was Mange's beautiful wordsmithing. I just it came from the heart. It came straight from the heart. If you have yeah. not read it, I just linked it in chat, guys. You should definitely read the power rankings, uh, especially Avatars. Um, so I have I have a few bones to pick with you. I have a few. Uh, question marks on here Um, and this is not to kick my beloved entropy in the balls Um, but I think you have them too high I think you guys were super gracious and part of the reason I'm asking you this is because I know Mange that you might be in my camp as far as the thought process on where entropy belongs can you kind of take us through the discussion and how entropy ended at six um talent wise like just go like seed by seed they're still one of the most talented in the in the league and that does count for something um and like they did lose to aeon aeon's really fucking good to you and then they lost to golden west who's not so good but uh it was closer and like sometimes shit and high sun happens so I, we try not to be like unless we don't have a lot of information on like a team like for example uh, team 1600 we have like no information on that um we try not to like knee jerk too much like week to week just because like shit happens but you know like if they keep losing then they're, they're definitely not going to stay upper half like i don't know like at some point results do have to count so right now they're up there because because they started so high and because, like, their roster is so strong. Mm. Jack Sox, who would you have above us? So, you know, that that is the question that's always asked, right, is if not there, then who? Um, and the part that's tough about this is I know a lot of people are going to look, look statistically and go, well, that's that's just not, that's just not true. Um, I think what we'll come to see is eventually um, – Depending on how things go, I, I could see 1600 dust being higher rated. Um, I think they play in a weaker division overall that they could take advantage of. Yes, Orange is a motherfucker, but I don't think the damaged ones in Noob Central are, are that good. Uh, which hurts to say because I was really fucking high on the noobs. I had them really high preseason. Uh, but I think that Team 1600 dust has five opponents that they could match up very well against. Um, and then you just got teams like Team Rank 5 and Defias Brotherhood to watch out for. Um, I don't think – there's so far what I've seen from Entropy is matchups that I've, I picked them to win. I mean, um, in discussions that have happened outside of Tavern Talk, I've picked Entropy to win. I've picked specific seeds that were, like, in my opinion, locks to win. Uh, I haven't seen that reliability. With Team 1600 Dust, a.k.a. 1200 PR, we shit on them a lot at the beginning of the season because we didn't know anything about them. And as I'm learning more about them, I'm learning more about the division they're in, I think Xerogy is underperforming to where I thought they would be this season. Uh, An a, a awful point total. Feels like Entropy from last season at this point. Um, but, you know, we're learning a lot about these teams right now. I, I would have 1,600 dust above us, um, and I would have to look deeper at Netherstorm. Uh, yes, they were rocky, but as Mange had just said himself, there's something that you have to keep in there as far as talent goes. Last season, we saw Netherstorm come off to a, a very slow three-game start. They figured out who they were. Um, they have some new personalities over there that they need to figure out how they gel and how everybody works together on that team. You have two great minds in Cheesy and Twiz with coaching capabilities over there. And I think we're going to see Netherstorm picking up steam and moving ahead where and really figuring out who they are. Whereas I think Entropy already knows who they are and needs to figure out how to make all the parts work together in the same machine. Um, so those are the two teams I could argue having above Entropy currently. Yeah, I mean, I could totally see 1600 does. I think... Um... I mean, Grant, how 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 heavily does um does the power rankings what weigh head to head matchups? Uh, it matters some, but not not, not a ton. Like yeah. 
Yeah, that would be the only thing that would keep for me keep entropy above Netherstorm, and that's I don't I don't think that's bias. Um, I just think um, I, I I personally weigh head to head matchups more than uh, certain things, and I would I think that would keep us. But I have no argument against the sixteen hundred dust. That would be totally, you know, totally acceptable. Well, hey, if you guys lose next week, we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I have another one I want to ask you about, and. I, this is not so much a disagreement as my thought process versus your thought process, so I want to hear yours. You have Avatar at number 11. Um, I only see their stock falling. And I'll give you a couple weeks to see if they keep falling before I, I freak out about that one. Um, but I put them in the category with two other teams for – the 16th ranked team. I'm not going to call them the worst team, but I'll call them the 16th ranked team in the league. You yeah. currently have Synergy there, which at their point yeah. total and at their DQ uh, total, okay. But I don't put a lot of value into DQs. Um, I would not rate this as a bad team so much as if you have four DQs on your team, and I'm sorry, consider the shots fire. Captain, step the fuck up and do something about it. Um, four DQs in the fourth week of a season, a foot needs to go promptly up someone's ass. However, Temporal Legends did not have a single DQ last week and set a record for a uh, completed matchup, meaning all five matches played, with only two points last week. So is this based on the DQs, or do you actually think that Temporal Legends is a better team than Xenergy? Well, Temporal Legends has a win on the season. Synergy doesn't. Um, so, like, completing your matches and, like, having a win. I don't remember who they beat, but I know they did win. I don't know. Like, I think if, if Temporal Legends was to play Synergy head-to-head, they'd win. So that's more or less. And, like, I, I definitely get not wanting to count DQs, but we'll, we'll absolutely penalize heavily for DQs. Like, it's it's one thing to... To lose, but it's another thing entirely just to not show up. Mm. By the way, it was Team Golden Wisp that they beat. Yeah, well, who's not very strong either, but you know, it's still win. Yeah, that's that's pretty much why. Like they they haven't even won, and on top of that, uh, you know, they're just DQing left and right. Now, I, for, to his credit, like I know, you know, we we talked about Simon or Dexter, you know, stepping up. I think. He's taking the steps necessary. He's been pretty much on top of it. It's just been kind of like, uh, you know, like the leaky boat where you plug one hole and another one springs up. That's kind of what's going on here because it's been different guys almost every time. Yeah. All right. I was processing that in that in that silent moment there. I, I right. forget that you guys can't see me. Um, nope. uh, Anarchist, any questions, concerns? I mean, we got the author of the power rankings right here. Anything you want to ask him? Um, no. I mean, I- I'm scrolling through it, and there's, I mean, if it was me, I'd have Zenergy at the bottom, too. Um, for the same reason he said. Like, even though they've had so many DQs, like, even if those games were played, like, I don't even know how much it would have mattered at looking at their point total. I haven't looked at all their games, but um, yeah, I could, I'm like you said, I'm fine with entropy where they are. I'm fine. If there are two spots less, you know, we, we've been underperforming. I think everyone else has been um, pretty, I think everything else is pretty, pretty spot on on it. I think Yogg Tramps dropped uh, three. I think that was what I was most surprised about, mm. but after looking at everything, it wasn't like <clears throat> after the 1600 dust win, the Netherstorm win, like, and how badly Netherstorm beat the Yogg Champs, I, like, all that makes sense now. Yeah. Like, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, wow, they dropped that far, and then actually looking at it, it all makes it, you know, I can see the reasoning behind everything. I mean, we, we do put a lot of time into trying to figure it out, and, you it's not like we're just throwing like that much shit against wall. Like some wall, I, some shit, absolutely. Just seeing what sticks. But we do, we do put some thought into it. So. <laughs> you know, there's a process here. Sometimes there's poo slinging. Other times there's not. You know, it's some, it's some, some poo slinging and some thinking. 
So speaking of some thinking, um, does it need to be done when we talk about the player power rankings? As Jerry has come up with this formula to throw it out there. I'm going to list them 10 to 1 um, just because I like saying them. And then we'll bring up a few things, a couple kudos, a couple of shout outs. And we'll open it up for questions at that point. Coming in at number 10, the rookie five seed of team rank. I couldn't think of any clever thing to say there. Rogue JT has learned not only how to play hot at a uh, shitty level, but he could also meme up the five seed in THL as well. Congratulations, Rogue, on making the list. Um, fuck you. When we get back into Discord, I'll tell you that to your face, too. Vendy having a pretty solid season coming in at number nine. Double O's, as we said, proving the real deal that he's up there in uh, the one seed, holding it down, doing his thing. Zab coming in at number seven. A-Roy, touched on earlier, putting together a nice season. Number six, nine and two overall. Adidas doing what Adidas does. A guy that uh, quietly has been just a stud in this league for a couple seasons now. Doesn't really get the spotlight that a lot of other uh, top players do. But Adidas doing Adidas things over there. Bork proving that last season... uh, was just some growing pains with some new cards, apparently. Uh, putting it together, coming at the four spot, 3-0. and These guys, by the way, from A-Roy up are all 9-2 and two overall. Slimch, coming in at the three spot. Dag Randolph, representing for the five seeds. First time a fifth seed in this league has hit legend. Congrats, Dag. And Jesus C, still the MVP of my heart. Rocket number one on the power rankings. And this is why I want to hype. And they're probably going to both dog cuss me for this. We have two guys on Team Rank 5 that are on the in the top three on the player power rankings. They're also both former MVPs. Can we see our first two-time THL MVP this season coming um, from one of these two gentlemen? They, they, have a, they have a cute little friendly competition going about who's going to lose first and who's going to get the MVP, so... I hope one of them does. That'd be nice. So here's the question. Do you think that one would sabotage the other to make it happen? Oh, he seriously is cutthroat as fuck. If he could find a way to, like, pull some his internet or something, he absolutely would. I'm not even fucking kidding. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't think that Slimsh is, uh, I don't think Slimsh is, uh, the hateful type of man to like, no. I can just imagine, I can imagine them practicing and Slim should be like, yeah, um, Nat Pagel is a great tech choice. You should, you should tech him <laughs> in. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm, unfortunately for Slim, we all, we all make sure he sees his <clears throat> decks are on point. So I don't know if that's going to work. So, you know, teams out there, I don't know if you're hearing this. Um, team rank five, see how they work together to make sure all the decks are on point. If you've ever watched their class selections, they're pretty, uh, uniform and it's, it's almost like they have a direction and all five players are heading in the same direction. You know, just putting that out there. Um, can we just, can we just give a shout out to Slims right now? Who just, uh, you do not know my, my hate. <laughs> Sweet <Swim> for age. <laughs> Oh, somebody needs to link that Coxal Baba chasing the dude around with a butcher knife meme right now. It needs to be in the chat right now. Um, so guys, what are your thoughts on the player power rankings? Anybody you're shocked to see up there? Um, anybody else you want to hype up that you think looking at their play? I know it's early in the season, but technically speaking, guys, this is the midweek of the season. Um, yep. It's week four, which is smack dab in the middle of our seven-week regular season. So let's get that MVP hype going. Does anybody have a favorite at this point? Well, Jesus C has already won his match 3-1, so he's going to be 12-2 and two after this. Uh, Jesus is a fucking god, so he's my pick until he loses. Yeah. Uh, Rogue JT, number 10, he's already lost. He's off the oh, list. That sucks. Fuck Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Aroy is one three one, so he's gonna be twelve and three. So we've already got some results in. Yeah. Um, I mean, I we could we could hype up like you know, salt the salad people make this happen next week. 
Aroy versus Jesus C in the four <sighs> seed going at each other. That's going to be big. Early MVP aspirations on the line. Come on. Make Salt. It Salt. You're, you are confusing this show with something intelligent. Um, hey, uh, I, I mean, let me help you, Salt. Nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> the end. So, actually, Salt, so just so you know, we're going to spend like a whole 30 seconds talking about that a little bit. All right, so that's some Power Rankings bullshit. Uh, I'm not on any of those lists. Misplay for everybody. I'm undefeated on the season. I have not lost a single fucking individual game. I need to be on those those <laughs> PPRs next week. All right. The only we... other thing I want to say before we switch off of that is, Dag, I'm coming for you. Oh! Oh, shots fired! Oh. Team rank, uh, team... Let's hype it up. I'm the going. Harry, the Harry Generals Harry and uh, Entropy squaring off. Hype it up. I, I, I see I, all the Dag hype in chat. Let's get some uh, Anarchist hype going here. Let's get some love for the Anarchist. Look at that sweet fucking <laughs> pipe. We need some Vape Nation. We need some Vape Nation oh, right now in chat. If you want to show Anarchist some love, let's see the Vape Nation. All right. Moving on to week four. Looking at where what uh, we have coming down the... Oh, fuck. I didn't fill any of this out. I'm going to say, Mange, say tell me... <laughs> <laughs> Mange, go ahead and tell me uh, what you're excited for this week, team-wise. Who are you most hyped for and why? And feel free to elaborate for a second or two while I figure my fucking pick out. Yeah. Uh, so I have the Harry Generals and Entropy. The Harry Generals, who started a little slow with their with their first week, and since then has been beating everyone's ass. Entropy, very talented, unperforming. Like this is this is I think the best match of the season. Um, specifically, specifically, C. Parker, Dag Randolph. That needs to happen on Tavern Talk as well. I want to see the the four or five seed heavyweights come at it. Um, uh, I'd also like to see. Oh, you guys! Oh, no! The Harry Generals don't have Andy anymore. That's too bad because I really wanted to see Andy and Nimble go at it too. Uh, but poker and bulk should be okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, um, also, I keep looking at this pipe picture. Like, I've been looking at the entire time I'm talking. It's fantastic. <laughs> I, I seriously think that picture was taken on my 18th birthday, which is just over seven years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was last week. But yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Like, it's classy it's, as fuck. D lineman, Jedi. Like, the, these are all. Just good matches. Uh, yeah, this it, whole damn yeah. thing needs to be streamed. This is one of the more evenly, from top to bottom, more, uh, like, it's just fucking, you, even if you look at Mark Shire versus Smoke Salmon, um, Salmon is a shitter. He's fucking garbage. Um, he will tell you that himself. But occasionally, Agreed. occasionally he, like, plays really good Hearthstone. Um, so don't let that 100-point PR difference fool you there. Um, and D-Lyman against Jedi. I hope D-Lyman emotes him the entire time. Oh, it should be great. <laughs> so I, I finally fell, uh, settled on my pick, guys. Um, I'm hyped as – I'm actually – this is not a meme. I'm hyped as fuck for this. Team Avatar versus Noob Central. It's going to be like two monkeys in separate cages at the fucking zoo just throwing shit at each other. Um, you know, you got two teams that... You got implosion happening over at Avatar. You have some guys with some fire in their belly. Um, Lemur's losing his grip as a captain has something to prove. Gnets may or may not have just uninstalled our stone oh, permanently. Right. Gnets is gone. Um, <laughs> there he is. He's still in chat. So you have uh, you, you have <laughs> fuck the angel. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. By the way, if you guys haven't gotten to Discord and just listened to Gene Edge just rant and bitch about Hearthstone, you guys should do that. He's, <laughs> that guy is like always happy and laughing and smiling, except when he's playing Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's so good he's so angry uh so maybe ray c will get a, a win to break his his tough times um as you know g nets uh 
GNATS might be a DQ win for him. I don't know what's going to happen over there. I can't imagine a sub willingly putting themselves into uh, the mix with Team Avatar. <laughs> I wouldn't want to step in that shit puddle. Although, Bitbeaker, good for you, man, for being man enough to step in there this week. Uh, but Noob Central has, they, they got something to prove. They got a lot to work on. They're a team that, I'm going to straight up say it as I feel, they you guys should have done better so far this season. Um, it it's I am disappointed. I'm not angry. I am not hurt. I am just disappointed. Now, that's my pick for the hype matchup for the week because Anarchist actually stole the one I really wanted to say. Anarchist, tell us about your matchup for the week. And maybe uh, fill his uh, out sooner. Wait, what? And then maybe he should fill his shit out sooner. Not blaming other <laughs> yeah, people. He, he still hasn't filled it out. Anyway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's over here mixing drinks at eight o'clock, and we've got our we've got our document ready to go. I picked sixteen hundred does versus Defy's Brotherhood this week. That yeah, match man. is going to be awesome. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited for this one. I mean, Ridiculous Hat versus Boom Boom Hall. I think that's going to be good. Um, we got Ziggy Sarah against Asuna, which Asuna just came back in the league and three uh, would Grim, I believe it was, and Ziggy Sarah's doing well. So. Um, Aroy has already won a match on here. Uh, comp better submit classes. Uh, I think he has like a little bit of time left, but I'm, I'm really excited to see where this one falls. Cause it's both, uh, both really high, uh, high rank teams right now in their respective divisions. So I'm looking forward to this one. I agree. Yeah. What you said. It sounds pretty good. <laughs> um, Match that we're most hyped for for individual players. Mange, what a fucking great one. Yes! I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, to be fair, C. Parker had this, like, like before the season even started, he was talking about this in Discord. So I might have stolen a little bit, but it is what I want to see the most. And that is Josh Sampson. See if he can squeak one out against T.H. Uh, Lemur. Oh, two, two four seats, two... Or probably, like, if there was an all-star vote last season, they'd probably be, you know, near the top of the list. <clears throat> They've both struggled a little bit this season. But, uh, I, you know, please, for the love of God, make that happen on Salty Saturday. Hopefully, Lemur, hopefully Josh Lemur. Samson can do it, because I know his schedule's weird. Uh, Lemur said he has to babysit, so I don't know uh, what's going to happen. What the fuck, Lemur? <laughs> Lemur, it's okay. Just do your Beyonce... Uh... Pretty girls or whatever the girls fuck that dance is you do on the internet. That that's your, that's your friend Taylor. I'm air quoting Mage. I know you can't see me. Your friend yeah, Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just up, he's up in the club. Just broke up. He's doing his very own thing. And it's fucking Are you great. Babysitting. Um, that's yeah. what he said. Did I mean, you see what? Did you see what Gina said in chat? No. <laughs> Wanting to see Lemur. Are you guys retarded? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Can't Puma's BFF babysit himself for like an hour? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, so I went with, um, I was going to meme and say say myself versus Mange because neither one of us actively play, but that'd be a fucking cop out. Uh, the truth of the matter is, and I know we've talked about it a lot, but I don't really see a matchup with more potential hype um, of two of the people that are considered the best of the best in their seeds so much this season as uh, Dag versus Vape Nation. Um, <laughs> it, it's hype as fuck. And it, it's, it's not being streamed. It is being streamed. There might be a stream. Uh, it, as of right now, I'm casting Salty Saturday. We're I think we're scheduled at four, so... I mean, if someone wants to do it, I'll have to get in touch with him, see if we want to make this on stream or not. Yeah, you guys should make that on stream. Um, that's a thing you guys should do. Yeah, I'd like to see that for sure. Make um, it happen. Uh, and if you could do it on Saturday, uh, that'd be good because I'm available on Saturday. You know? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, I'll have to get in touch with him, so we'll uh, see if we can move it. Like I said, we're playing for Sunday, but... Um, this, dude, He's a there is so, so much, there is so much dag love. I, I just, I don't get it, man. They clearly yeah. aren't seeing this pipe. Uh, it oh, there's, t there's tons of dag, quiet, dag hype, and that's why I'm, uh, uh I'm, uh, call, calling shots. Like, let's the go. Guy, the guy comes in memeing. 
talking about, you know, well, just memeing and kicking ass. Like, how can you not love that, Randolph? Mm. Um, I can tell you how I don't love him because he's going up against my boy in in the Fair five enough. seed, the anarchist. Yeah. Fair enough. Decided. And, you know, anarchist is like my adopted five seed, too. You know, he's a fellow Discord bro, so. Discord uh, bros. Feels um, good, man. Slim, sh I hear you on that. Um, I will try to adjust. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So, um, by the way, Salmon, uh, the games you lost come second, not first. You have that backwards up there. It's supposed to say oh three. Oh, yeah. yeah, seriously. Um, <clears throat> my captain just dag hyped in chat. What is this? What does this league come to? <laughs> dag hyped. <laughs> All right, moving on after that. that yeah, spot. so tell us about yours, Anarchist. Uh, my pick is my former captain, Slimpsh versus uh, Vindy. Um, they're both on the player power rankings right now. I think uh, my, my mouse has disappeared, but where's where's ben, Vindy on here? He's he on is, there. He's number nine. So he's nine and four. Slimpsh is nine and two. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that one works. Uh, works out. My, my former captain, um, and then we got Vendy going. So I'm I'm really excited to see what happens happens there. That one's gonna be a slug fest for sure. And more MVP, more MVP uh, possibilities on the line here. So MVP ness. Wait, that's different. Not anymore. Game. Not anymore. Feels bad, man. Um. Yeah, Slim Shorts is Vendy. I'm not gonna lie, I I this is one of those matchups where I feel like a bear cub has been thrown into a full grown lion's den. I mean, the bear still got teeth, he still got claws, uh, but but the lions killed man. And I don't know if you saw a couple seasons ago the the Team Rank Five hype video with with the lion. Um, I would like to be as hyped as you are, Anarchist. I really would. Um, in case you're not getting the reference, Slim shit's the fucking lying. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens there. The bear has a fighting chance. Um, oh fuck! I didn't load the pick'em. Shit! I had the pick'em, guys. I didn't load it up for you. Scroll um, down. Oh, it is still down there. Um. It is still down there. Okay, you. I see what you did. You posted that there, and then that. Okay. Um, Wait, I didn't do anything. You, you had it all there. Yeah, but it's the Q and A got filled out, and it pushed the pick them down. Is what happened. Yep. All right, so all right. here we go. Uh, I actually, our guests so far are. I believe our guests are also um, doing better than us. By the way. All right. So, this week, we have three games for consideration. I will say them, and then uh, you could you could pick your squad. You can give your 5 to 10 second reason for why you are picking said squad. Uh, for those at home who cannot see the document, Mange is currently beating me uh, with one correct pick, one incorrect pick. Uh, I didn't account for ties, because who the fuck predicts a tie? So I didn't count that game either for or against us. I was completely wrong twice last week. So I'm 0-2. Our guests, however, are 2-0. Uh, and 0. Sorry, not 2-1. and 1. Our guests are 2-0. and 0. So, <clears throat> Mange, Anarchist, your picks for this week are between Team Rank 5 and Entropy. Defias no. Brotherhood. Wait, what? That's the Harry Generals versus Entropy. I, oh, I, I was about to say, new sorry. schedule, boys. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I see the, the abbreviation, and I just automatically go TR5 in my head. Uh, mm. The Harry Generals, the Harry Boys versus Entropy. Defias Brotherhood versus 1600 Dust. Danger Zone versus Team Rank 5. We will start with uh, Mange first, and then I will go next just because with the way it lists, it makes it easier for me. And Anarchist, you will go last in each round. Mange, Defias Brotherhood. Not the fast brother. Team rank generals. <laughs> Fucking words. Team word. rank generals. <laughs> Fucking words. Yeah, they're a lot like us, but like we got we got to lay off the Tito's friends. Um, 
the hairy generals versus entropy who you got uh oh, i have the generals they're rolling entropy's reeling uh i don't feel great about it but you know gotta pick someone so we'll, we'll start with generals i really hate picking against my boys over there um you can't you can't and i have no to go I have oh, to. Um, so I'm gonna pick Entropy because everybody knows I like Mark Shire more than anybody that's on fucking Entropy. Same, to be honest. So for those who weren't following along at home, that was an Entropy pick. Anarchist. Oh, I'm taking myself. Yeah, we're gonna win. Just you or the entire no, team? No, 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 no. Oh, he's myself and the team. team. He's gonna put the gonna entire put fucking team on his back. Team on my back. Let's go. Okay. No. I gotta pick uh, Entropy. Last time I was here uh, on Tavern Talk, I picked us over Netherstorm. We won. I'm doing it again. Yep. Entropy's gonna win. I. I've been off the team since last week. That feels bad, man. Feels bad, you can't man. kick me off the team I own. I'm Jerry fucking Jones. I'll fire your I'll ass fire. and hire some other shitter. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll let Tony Romo captain the team for fucking two seasons longer than he should. The fuck? Fuck off! All right, sorry, I get distracted easily. Defias Brotherhood versus 1600 Dust. Mange, who are you going with? Uh, Defias Brotherhood. They're also rolling. The Dust, they're, they're showing me. They're showing me things, but not this week for them. I pick against I, Captain Comp. <laughs> Captain Comp. Uh, glad to see him having success, by the way. Comp's a solid dude for those of you who have never got to never got talk solid to him. Solid dude, good dude. Um, I'm also going to go with Defias. However, I will say... 1600 if you win this week i am officially fucking on your bandwagon i'll i'll even play the fucking triangle um i know that's not really what bandwagon is but makes me feel good damn it anarchist who you going with uh i'm taking uh i'm gonna take 1600 dust Attaboy. i know they're down right now but I, I, I got faith in them Attaboy. Although I'm really tempted just because they picked three paladins to say defy us, but I'm going to roll with them this week. Uh, good guy, Anarchist, tanking the guest picks for us to help us look better. <laughs> well, he's like a pseudo-host, so I think he has a little sympathy for us over here. Fair uh, <laughs> um, and last but not least, uh, Danger Zone versus Team Rank 5. Mange, who you got? Uh... All right, Danger Zone it is. Moving on. Leave it at that. Um, I actually disconnected for a moment, so I got uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh. Doo -doo -doo. leave it at that. Oh, leave okay. It at that. okay, well, yeah, no, I'm gonna pick us. Um, <clears throat> I'm not an idiot, uh, so I'm also gonna go with Team Rank Five. Oh, now we lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I you can't pick a you can't pick against the undefeated Team Rank. <clears throat> Although I think this is probably their biggest test so far. Danger Zone is a test. That's how strong the green division is. Yeah, green not very good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, if you look at who they've played, I mean, they they played 1600 Dust in their debut, which is always going to be hard. Uh, they then they played Synergy. It's uh, not doing yeah. so hot right now. And then they played Avatar when they're just downright imploding. And so Danger Zone's definitely their t their toughest opponent so far. So, but they still win it. All right, so to summarize for those who like to follow along at home, Mange has the Generals over Entropy, Defias over 1600, Team Rank 5 over Danger Zone. Just give me the chalk. <laughs> All favorites. Um, I went with Entropy over Generals, Defias over 1600, Team Rank 5 over Danger Zone, and Anarchist uh, being the underdog picker that he is. Went Entropy, 1600 Dust, Team Rank 5. So, we'll see how this tally goes. Mange, we can't lose to our guests. Uh, we're supposed to be the dudes that know what the fuck's going on in this league. So, yeah, let's let's yeah. not do those. Oh, I never said that. <laughs> I, just, I just meme. I just meme. Naming's good. Um... Austin the streaming during Tavern Talk. I want everybody to pop into Austin the stream and just shit on her for trying to compete with Tavern Talk right now. Oh, um, damn. Like, I just go in there, dance game, and come back. It'll be great. Uh, the hot topic of the week, 
Um, and I'm going to have to defer to you guys on this one because the whopping five matches of Hearthstone I've played this month have all been Zuladin because I heard it was a really strong deck. Um, yeah, I'm not a breaker. So I, this question is more THL related than anything else. Um, have the nerfs impacted the meta the way we thought they would? Or has actually have the nurse had the impact we would like? Let's let's phrase it that way. That way. No. 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 Um, all the best X are still the best X. I guess aggro shaman's not. Aggro shaman took a hit, uh, but that's kind of it. You just like shaman has so many fucking good cards because they got every good card for the last however many expansions. So like they lose rock rider and tusk card for Samak, and you replace them with other OP shit, and shaman's still fucking good. Uh, the Yogg is still probably good enough to play on ladder, so you're still going to see it quite a bit on ladder. Uh, it's like nothing has really changed. However, if this is a start of a more frequent balance, you know, maybe every season, every other season, uh, I'd be incredibly happy with that. But for now, it's not enough. Anarchist, anything you'd like to add to, to Mage's thoughts? Um, the only thing I'm kind of surprised of... Hunter seems to have had been picks this week. Um, last week it was picked 61 times, and Hunter's now picked 38 times. Or yeah. So that that surprised me, honestly. I knew Call of the Wild was a really, really good card. I did not think one man on that would um, cause that many people to kind of take a step back. But it's not that it's opened up any other decks, really. Uh, uh, Mage has had seen a slight bump. But other than that, it, uh, Shaman, Warlock, Warrior, and Druid are just picking up some of those extra spots. So other than the drop in Hunter, I haven't seen, it's not, um, there's not been a ton of change in what yeah, people are bringing. That's, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Hunter did get hit, and it's definitely worse. Um, but of all the power decks, like all of the problem decks, it was the least problematic, in my opinion. Like, it was just a response to, like, Warrior being everywhere and Druid being really good. So the fact that, like, all it did was hurt the counter deck is fucking stupid. Those are actual educated Hearthstone minds giving you thoughts on whatever I said to talk about. Um, another topic that accidentally came up during that, and I just want to bring it up real quick more as a PSA. Uh, Slimsh is the true MVP of the THL community. Uh, he has linked a whole bunch of THL folks who actively stream on a pretty regular basis. That if you guys haven't thrown a follow to yet, go ahead and follow those those folks. Um, I've been in most of their streams. I will not lie, I've not been in, in Timothy's stream, but that's just because I think Timothy's a cuck. Um, no, Pumbas is a good dude. He uh, he came on here not too long ago. Did a great job. Appreciate having him on here. Um, but give those folks a follow. Uh, Aerodan there, he asked, uh, he's trying to get to 10 followers, guys. Simple goal that this community can help him with. Show some support to each other. Uh, that's what THL is about. Also, if you are a corporate shill that works till the dinner time um, hours, I will help you get through the end of your work day by singing Avril Lavigne and Vanessa Carlton to you while I level in WoW. It's a true story. All right. <clears throat> so thank you guys for your actual input on the nerfs. Um, so hopefully that appeased your desire for us to speak on that. Salty Saturday. I heard that we had two thirds of the lineup uh, set. I doubt that's changed since the beginning of the show. I was not told who those two of the three are or what times they're going to be at. I do know a post went up in the Team Hearth League official Facebook uh, asking if anybody was interested in giving you the emails uh, necessary to contact those folks. Also check your THL email, the email you use for THL, as those invites uh, are often sent through the mail and set up that way. First come, first serve. There's one spot open. I vote Dag, Randolph, and the Anarchist. Same. Uh, I well, believe I'll... I'll be casting it, so I think that's the plan right now that I'll like be casting you can't, the... Like you can't cast and play at the same time? <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, you're what pays you for us, by the way. Yeah, I think yeah, train, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Got you. Sorry, I cool. turned off notifications for. Uh, I'm Stack. trying to talk. I'm trying to talk to you guys while I'm refreshing. 
Um, I'm super fucking intelligent. <laughs> Dude, it's been a long time since I've gone the Tito's route, and there's a reason for that, damn it. Um, <laughs> so, Salty Saturday, Slim, if you could put us on to any information you have in the chat there, I'll give it a shout out. Uh, uh, right now we have um, Orc versus Arcane THL and MV Parker. Those are the two confirmed matchups, but I don't think the times are confirmed yet. Oh, yeah. Parker's playing on train. Nice. Looks like it. Maybe he won't miss lethal this time. I'm a good captain. I know what my team's doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> I bet you know who they picked in their last HOTS game, though. Um, I do. Uh, <laughs> some Q&A for us, fellas. Um, holy shit. This is a long question. I know you read this to me. Hold on. I'm going to read it before I read it, because I might be able to cut this wall of text down. Okay, no, actually, the whole thing needs to be fucking read. So, yeah. so this is courtesy of Pumbas, who stole it from Slimsh. Um, so, no points for plagiarizing, Pumbas. THL is a format that rewards submission of classes with flexibility. Charge has been changed to the point where OTK Warrior can't exist. Can this allow Paladin and Priest, to some extent, to have a better chance? Does Rogue become more of an attractive option with the above and even without the above? Basically, can the lesser submitted three classes see higher submission frequencies after the change? Not Priest. Priest's problem is it just sucks. Like, it doesn't beat anything. It's not that it doesn't beat the meta. It just literally doesn't beat anything. Um, so that's that's not going to change. Uh, Paladin, I think you could you could see an uptick. Um, and Rogue, Rogue, probably more so than the rest, because this works is matched up by Fire's Aggro Shaman, which I don't think can exist anymore. Um, so, it, you probably see a little bit of an uptick, just because, like, Hunter got nerfed, and Hunter isn't as strong, so just naturally, other classes will, will rise because of that, but, I don't know, like I said, I don't think that a whole lot has changed, meta-wise. Yeah, I mean... This week we have nine paladins, and nine rogues. Yeah. Last week we had awesome. five of each. Yeah, um, a little bit. And we had seven paladins in week two, and only four rogues in uh, week two. So, <clears throat> I don't know how much uh, OTK warrior was even being played in THL. I mean, dragon warrior so strong, control warrior is good. Um, it was it was yeah, played yeah. some. It it does like. The fact that it's an option, like, you could just submit Warrior, and then, like, come match day, you have, like, actual, like, five good Tier 1 decks to choose from, like, it's yeah. it's a big deal that that's not one of them anymore, but it's not a huge deal. I agree. I don't think it's... The, the Nurse to Shaman were small. They weren't, like, Aggro Shaman, like he said, is probably not going to be broad. It's pretty much going to be exclusively mid-range, but I don't think that's, um... That it's improving Paladin or Priest or Rogue. We are seeing an uptick in Mage, but I don't think Mage was ever that bad. It was just that you, the other five classes that are being brought so much were just that much better. Yep. Mm. Pretty much. So, I'm just wondering, was uh, Brunson one of those Rogue bringers? He was. Uh, did, did he even <laughs> submit classes? He's not in this week. He's 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 got a sub. Uh, he was uh, last week. Um. So we'll see what happens. And guys, just so you know, last night on stream, Conair Gamer was playing Tempo Rogue, and apparently it's so good. Yeah, not a good deck. So good. Yeah, th Please, this man, week, Oral Legends have brought three rogues, so they're, they're expecting a shift. Huh. <laughs> well, now we know why they scored two points last week. Oh, that's this week. I don't know. Last wow. week, I mean, regardless, uh, like that's just whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, next question. <clears throat> amidst all the, uh, I believe this came from Vendy Click. Um, amidst all the uh, analysis of seeds, PR, and the PPR, what do you think of the skill gap between seeds? Several players in the league have bounced heavily between seedings, and I'm curious what their thoughts are on the quality of opponents based on seed. How heavily 
have you experienced this yourself sparring with teammates um this is actually part of the reason that i'm not currently actively playing in the league uh i do think there is no longer as big of a skill gap as there once was between the one and at least the one four seats for sure and even in some cases like you know green division uh the one and five seats i definitely think there's some power creep going on where um True four five C players like myself are being washed out by true two three C players that are in the four and five seed spot. So I actually don't think there's that big of a skill gap now uh, between the different seeds throughout the league. Um, I do think you'll always have those sort of what I call elite tier players, um, the slimshes and cheesy. For those who don't get to see the hidden PR. Um, they are well above at the, the third and fourth place people. Um, at the same time, you have the people whose PRs are 100 and actually are truly 100. And then you have Dag Randolph, whose PR is like, I wish I just closed the pace accidentally. I think it's like one something. 131. Yeah, 131. 131. And the dude just hit oh, legend. I'm sorry. After this week, he was 156. He's 156 in week. So. 156, which we know not to be correct because he just hit legend. Um, so I I don't I don't really think there is as big of a skill gap, and I also think that uh, Hearthstone is one of those games where when there's such close competition in a lot of the seeds, and there's so much RNG as there is in Hearthstone, um, it minimizes that skill gap even farther because you know you can miss lethal and then still top deck uh you know some bullshit three turns in a row on salty saturday and uh beat somebody you shouldn't so that's my answer to that question mange anarchist um there's it's blended a little bit especially at the higher seats some teams like ourselves have like three players that could be one seeds but they're still I don't know. I think, like, it's it's definitely fun to meme about Hearthstone and talk about how much RNG and, like, bullshit it is. But I think it's disingenuous to say that it's, like, there's no skill involved whatsoever. Or it's, you know, that it's, there's not skill involved at all. Like, if you go look through THL record books and THL results, certain players like Slims and Cheesy have been consistently better than their counterparts, and there are certain other players who have been consistently worse than those seeds. Um, I I think that there is a skill difference between seeds. Like, I've played in the one seed, I've played in the four seed. Like, I've gone, like, you know, that, like, you, you can feel it. You you know, I, I've, like, never won a game in the one seed, uh, but I did really well in the two and three seeds. So, I don't know, it's just, like, ah. Uh, I don't know. I love the fucking shit talk hard sound because fuck that game. But <laughs> good players consistently win. And that there's a reason for that. Uh, so I do think that the seeds, that there is there is a difference. It, it's definitely blurred. It's definitely like not as great as, in, as it was in past seasons. But there is a difference. I, I mean, I haven't been around for enough seasons to know the legacy of some of this stuff. Um, but I would say that it's well, it's Hearthstone. You can't play like there are so few players who are able to play so consistently good. Just look at tournaments and the um, people who are making it to the world championships and stuff. And that's on that high level that there's very few people who are able to do that. But you can look at things like Jim and I starting off with a really slow start, even though coming off of a MVP runner up season. Um, but I don't want to take anything away from the from the slimshes, the um, the cheesies, um, I don't know a ton about poker, but I know um, he is extremely um, well regarded. And then the, I know in bulk practices a lot. And the people who, it's more than just Hearthstone, it's the THL format. And mm. Slimsh is like a god at being able to dissect this, what his opponent's bringing, what decks to bring that are going to give him the best chance to win. And that's why he's still able to win so consistently at the one seed and the players that are able to do that are going to always rise to the top. So I, well, it's not, I'm not going to like talk about like Hearthstone RNG, but the 
way to dissect the meta and the THL meta specifically figure it out. I think those players are always going to be at the top. I I agree with that. But then, like, on the flip side, too, there's Cheesy, who probably has, like, the highest lifetime win percentage in THL. I don't know if that's true or not. But I know it's way, way up there. Like, incredibly high. And all he does is bring the same fucking four smart decks over and over again. Like, he (laughs) plays them consistently well. Like, he, I don't know. He's just, like... He's the Vicious Syndicate Mage Expert. He is the Vicious Syndicate Mage Expert. He doesn't, doesn't bring mage! But, he brought it this week. I don't know, like, just real quick, like, a lot of people have talked about the Ragnaros 1 and 8 me. Like, that's the, the meme that people love. But if you watch that game, I missed the chance to set up lethal the turn before. And a better player would have 100% won the game before I could ever get 1 and 8 Like, there are so many scenarios like that where, like, yeah, like, certain plays have RNG, but better players will eliminate that or will, like, learn how to control that or pull the favor, like, pull the, the odds in their favor. Like, a better player 100% of the time wins that game rather than getting 1-8 and eight and being going, oh, you know, that's just so unlucky. It is unlucky, but, you know, the, like, there are plays that you can make where that wouldn't matter. And I didn't do it. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Last week, last week in my match, uh, in the one match I lost, I had a chance to set up lethal, with, uh, and I would have needed a top deck. I did get that top deck, but I right. didn't make that play. Yeah, and so like, I so there is like, that. There are so many small things like that that like a good player, or not not to call you back, but like just playing better, like yes, yeah. you know, like that's a win. So uh, there is definitely skill involved in Hearthstone, and a lot of skill. Uh, but also, it's meaning and fuck ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, and I didn't mean for it to come off as uh, there is no skill involved, but there are situations where, you know, I don't want to call out any names because I don't want to make anybody feel too bad about it, but there's been a couple of this season, Salty Saturdays, where the better player who played better did not win. Yeah, uh, oh, it's like, I mean, that happens sometimes for sure. So, you know, um, and, and is there a difference between the, I guess this is where my vision is also jaded is I remember when Hambo and, and Jing Buddha were the two scariest dudes in the league. Um, and now, you know, these are dudes that are still very well respected within the league, but they are, they're four seeds, you know, or Hambo is currently rocking in the one seed. Do not get me wrong. And he's on a team that's doing very well, but, um, if you look at his PR and what that is on most teams currently, uh, we we see a, a different picture of uh, – so I guess that's – I'm seeing these names that are former one seeds, uh, the comps of the worlds, the Slimshes, um, which, by the way, how is Slimsh – no, he is the one seed, right? Yeah, he is. Yes. Yeah, so why did I think he dropped to two for some reason? I don't uh, know. Maybe, I don't oh, know. it's because Envy Parker – uh, is is a one seed player playing down a spot? Um, I see these names of guys that I've seen in higher rankings now playing at lower spots, and to me, I guess that's what's changing my vision on it. Is there was never a time where uh, a Jesus C could have potentially? I should bring this up so I could get exact names of who I'm trying to talk about here. Not that Jesus isn't playing like a stud right now. Not trying to take that from him, but there used to be a time where thinking about Jesus C playing against Jing Buddha first off. It was like, why would Jesus a five seed ever be playing against a one seed? Now here they are in the same seed together. Jesus comes off three, one. If you had asked me in season beta, if that could ever happen, I'd be like, hell no. Jing is so much bigger, uh, higher of a player than Jesus. C. Yeah. So like, I see these gaps closing. Um, is there definitely a difference between a player like Slim and a player like myself? Absolutely. Is there a difference between players like Nade and a player like myself? Uh, to be 100% honest with you, I don't know if it's that big of a difference. Uh, no, that's not a shot at Nade. I know I'd make fun of myself for being a shitter, but when I apply myself at this game, I'm not as awful as my record would tell you I am. Um, so, I don't know. I guess that's where my point of view on this was coming from, is that it used to be a much more stark contrast. Um 
And I, I think the gap between the seeds has definitely gotten tighter. But to your point, Mange, there is a difference between consistently successful people and those of us that are still trying to figure it out. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. But uh, the one thing what? I would say is, like, um, look at some old Wicked Wednesdays. Speaking of, are we going to do that this season? I uh, missed that. Maybe. But uh, uh, the Wicked Wednesdays, there were some consistent players at the at very the end. And mm -hmm. so the people who play a lot of Hearthstone, the, the better players do consistently win. And I think that's always going to be the case. True. Also, True. also, like, if you're in this Hearthstone league, and I know we've been on this point for a long time, no, um, it's, it's because you want to play seriously. And so, like, anyone that applies themselves, like, they're all improving. Like, everyone is getting better. So it's like, that's another reason, you know, why why maybe the seeds have a little bit a little bit. It's because, like, you can only get so good at a card game. But playing consistently in THL helps you reach that ceiling or get close to that ceiling. So that's that's part of it as well. Cool. So actually ended up being a great question. I thought it was going to end up being a meme of a question. Um, both of these had some great potential to talk about. Uh, sadly, I didn't care as much about the first question as I did about the second one. Because the overall state of Hearthstone, in case you can't tell, is not something I fully understand. THL is something I get. Um, and to, I, I think it was you, Anarchist, that pointed out earlier, there is also a difference between um, THL success and the format specifically that we use yeah. and, like, ladder success. Um, so, I mean, you'll have players like, and, and Slimsh knows this, this is not a shot at him. If Slimsh is so damn successful in THL, and you look at his PR and his record, you'd be like, why the fuck isn't that dude top 50 every damn season? Well, it's because it's a different game. It's different when you know um, exactly what you're going up against. And he just said in chat, I, it wasn't just, it was in the middle of our rant, how there's more data out right now. And even uh, his, his ladder has improved by the amount of data that's out there. So it's not just simply how good are you in the moment in deciding. It's how good are you in understanding the total uh, environment of the game and, like, what exactly you're getting into and equipping yourself the best you can to interact with that environment. Um, so it is also different being a THL stud versus a ladder stud. Or if you just know how to... I, I bet you Slimch is a corporate shill that does something with numbers for a living where he has to crunch data all day at a computer and listen to me sing Vanessa Carlton. <laughs> I think that's what makes THL so great, is there? it's so much more than... Uh-oh, I lost him. I yeah, lost I him. I, I, uh, I, I said that's one of the reasons I think TH, which that's what makes, makes THL so great, is it's so much more than... There's so much more you can prepare for and stuff like that, that it's just... It's it's a whole nother experience and it's awesome. Mm. So Slim, maybe that's the key to laddering. The key to success in THL is over preparing. The key to finishing a uh, high legend on ladder is to have no strategy whatsoever. I, I like that, Slim. Thank you for clearing that up for us. Uh, <laughs> THL confirmed higher skill cap than uh, ladder. We are the new meta. Well, folks, this was supposed to be a quick show, and it's now gone on for an hour and a half, which is probably about 60 minutes too long, um, especially yeah. when my face is the only face. Actually, you get to look at Anarchist's face with that, that beastly pipe over there. Um, I felt like I had a PSA. I forgot. Oh, the PSA is to all of our THL fam from Florida up to Virginia. Uh, please stay safe over the upcoming days. Um, Mange, that, that includes you, buddy. Glad that you made it through without losing power. Um, yeah. so far so good. You know, hopefully that thing stays a little further out to sea. Um, hopefully there's not too much flooding and all that good stuff. Uh, and if if there's any way that the THL fam could help you guys out if, when things do go uh, Matthew's way, you know, we're a community. That's what we're here for. So stay safe, guys. Um, Parker, C. Parker. Uh, parting thoughts for the folks at home this evening. Uh, yep. Stay safe. Play memes. Stay safe. Play memes. Beautiful. Mage. 
Let me hear your party thoughts for this evening. I ain't talking about chicken and gravy, biatch. Biatch! <laughs> uh, all right, fam. We will uh, we will see you next week. We'll bring back uh, Miss Sally's Haiku Corner. We want to keep things a little lighter this week to get through material quicker. Um, so we'll have the post, haiku, Q&A, all that good shit. Keep an eye on the forums. Get a Discord. Uh, THL's life, THL's love. We'll catch you next week. Until then, goodbye.